Okay, we're live. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's Cheryl Lawson, as you can see from my trusty little uh, <laughs> hangout toolbox. <laughs> so just in case you didn't, you can read it. Uh, I'm here in our first SM Tulsa Google Plus Hangout. Uh, thank you to Ruth Ann Wiesner. Is it Wiesner or Wiesner? Wiesner. Wiesner. <laughs> so okay. I spell it wrong and I say it wrong. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And we have our very own glam mom, uh, Lori Ann. <laughs> Lori. Lori Ann. Lori Ruth Ann. Lori Ann. <laughs> Lori Rothman. <laughs> So I lose the the Ruth Ann and then call you Lori Ann. Excellent. And I could be Cheryl Ann today. Well, there we go. We'll just make it all ends all around. <laughs> There's no so, rules. No rules. I know. Welcome, ladies. Thanks for being here. This is great. <laughs> I'm so glad we got a chance to, to do this. And hopefully we'll do more of these and so people can kind of join in and learn as we go. Because I think that's the best way to learn how to use a tool is just yeah. do it, right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, okay, so um, before we went on the air, we were we were talking about uh, this one kind of fun question, but um, maybe got a little serious. So, what's your favorite? And Ruthann, I'll ask you first. What's your favorite social network, and what's the one that you kind of wish would go away? Go away. I I personally right now um, a big fan of Instagram. Huge fan. Huge fan. And the one I wish that would go away would be Reddit. Reddit is, it's a, it's it's a little out of control at times. And I think if maybe there were some more safeguards on it, um, I think it'd be great for businesses. Right now, it's kind of just a blogosphere of opinions and, and passion. It seems. I mean, not that you know, Facebook isn't high schoolish, but Reddit seems very clickish, right? Very. You're not kind of a Reddit purist. Yeah. You're not exactly. welcome there. You're not welcome. They're not, they're not, not, they don't play well with others. Right. I'm so, never going I won't go. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's probably the least social, social network. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That I've seen. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally you, agree. Yeah. If you post something there, I just noticed that, um, you know, Bill Gates is doing a, uh, is it, they have the Ask Me Anything on Reddit. Is that what it is? Yep. So, I mean, I think they're gaining some popularity. The, you know, some of some big politicians did their own, but I don't know. It kind of scares me. So I, I'm, I have a tendency to agree with you. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> it's a little bit of a hotbed at yeah. times. Okay, Lori, to you, same question. Well, Favorite and one that you hope wish secretly or maybe not so secretly that it'll go away. You know, my favorite is Twitter, and um, my least favorite. Which would go away is um, LinkedIn because I didn't get in the one percent at LinkedIn. Oh, <laughs> I'm joking! I don't ever go. I mean, I don't get it. I just don't get it. David got the one percent. Yeah, I didn't. Well, you and two hundred thousand other people got the one exactly. percent, right? I got. I just found myself really with my nose out of joint last week with the whole cred thing. I'm like, where's my one percent? I have a really high score. Where is it? I wrote a blog post about it because I was like, <gasps> and then I got it, and I'm like, I am not a number. I don't really care. You are more <laughs> than know, a number. I think the LinkedIn thing was such a um, marketing. Uh, it was such a marketing ploy to get people to say, "Hey, I'm in the one percent." And then well, you know, the people who did, and I don't even remember. I don't even remember getting the email, so it must have been filtered into my promotions or something. But like, so now I don't even know what my percentage is. But um, I, you know, I think the people who were like, "Hey, I'm in the one percent," and then they saw everybody else posting it, felt. Yeah. I mean, that made you feel bad. Yeah. Right? So. Yeah, so the one thing, on the one hand, you were supposed to feel good about it, and then all of a sudden, you know, people are going, oh, you suck, because everybody got one. <laughs> well, I didn't, so I must really be the winner. Yeah. You know, I, you know, I use LinkedIn quite a bit. I mean, um, I, I like LinkedIn, for one, because, you know, keeping up with old um, employees and people I've worked with in the past, and... There's several groups that I am a member of that I really like engaging with those people in that space, as opposed to having them be friends on Facebook because they're not really friends, right? They're right. not, you right. know, they're not, and they're not, of course, on Google Plus, and most of them are not on Twitter. So if I want to know about, you know, people who I worked with at General Motors or Fleetwood, or you know, those those people are still working and still looking for jobs and still looking for recommendations. So they spend the majority of their time there. 
So, uh, and then I've used LinkedIn um, for Social Media Tulsa Conference, just, you know, finding people in Tulsa who are connected to people that I know and just inviting them one person at a time to the conference. <laughs> so, it's like, hey, let's connect. Thanks for connecting. You know, here I'm really excited. Here's a little coupon code. Little, I give them a little LinkedIn discount. And I'm not blasting everybody. Right. right? right. It's, hey, right. thank you personally for connecting with me, accepting my invite, or asking for me to, to be your friend. Here's a little something special for you. Right, <laughs> right, right. To make them feel special. Exactly. So, I mean, I get, I get it. If you're not looking for a job, it's probably not a good thing. But there's some real savvy ways to use. Well, I kind of am, but I don't, I don't find anything. I'm in a, like a really, we moved to a really strange spot here. I, you know what, you are, um, you're always keeping them moving. So um, I guess my favorite is Twitter. Yay, no surprises Yay. there because I'm like have multiple Twitter personalities. And, uh, <laughs> and my least favorite is Facebook. Is Facebook. Yeah. Sad. I, I've not liked Facebook from the beginning and um, I, you know, I'm there because I mean that's just kind of where you got to be if if you're a marketer or you want to know what your f other friends and family are up to. That you know, 900 million people, or I'm sure they've gotten to a billion between the time I. Oh, six billion. Oh wow. So you know, a billion people you, if, as a marketer, that's where you got to be. Right. Um, you know, personally, I would prefer not to be there at all, but I am so. There you go. I've I canceled my account once and <laughs> brought it back and brought it because it didn't go away. It never went away. Yeah. Once I yeah. said okay, I'll come back. Everything was still there. Yeah, it is pretty so. much the the hardest thing to actually completely delete, go away, do not return, do not email me. It's the hardest thing ever. Yeah. It's, it's, it's really a 27 crazy. step process and I think you have to like sacrifice a chicken or <laughs> something like that. <laughs> Your first <laughs> <board. laughs> So, um, so it's funny that you, both of you are from Chicago, which is an amazing. Uh, well, that's what, that's what happened, Cheryl. When one of us moves to Chicago, someone has to move to Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Oklahoma to Chicago and she had, you know, it's just how the planets work out, you know. You, <laughs> You have to keep a balance. <laughs> the universe is now balanced. That's right. As soon as you cross that state line, someone in Chicago has to start heading back. You know. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> so, um, tell me, I, I love the raw marketing uh, images. I love the the you can never be too social uh, the, the plaque that you have. Is it a is it a license plate? It's a, it's the back of our tablets. Ah, okay. <laughs> I was like, I'm not sure what it is, but I love yeah. the saying. Yeah. You can never be too can social. Be too so, tell us about raw marketing and kind of how you got started with that. Um, raw marketing. Uh, let's see how we got started with that. Is well, first raw marketing. Uh, we are a full service marketing company, and we are also do PR services, and we got started. I've been in the sales and marketing industry since the dot-com boom of the 90s and it has evolved as my experiences grew and as I said as I moved from Oklahoma to another state and moved out of state once I did end up coming to Chicago I kept those clients I had had in the past and started doing consulting work and just really my basis was in destination area marketing and that in turn has led to you know if it's already a remote location sometimes it's difficult for those people to hire um, an upper echelon of, of employees to help. You know, sometimes they end up having to hire somebody that maybe doesn't have any marketing experience, but since you're warm, breathing, and you'll show up tomorrow, they, <laughs> they'll pull you in. They'll pull you in. So there was definitely a niche that was there um, and understanding the market and their struggles that they have. When I moved to Chicago, I kept on a lot of clients, and then it just started growing. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. I know you have, I, I've seen the Raw Marketing Oklahoma Twitter yes. handle. Is there yes. an Oklahoma office here? Or are you developing that? There is. There's Erin. Erin Kramer is our Oklahoma person, and you'll meet her at the show. She'll be there. She's going to be 
hosting the booth and taking care of our uh, sponsorship table the entire time uh, while I'm, you know, talking and, and meeting everybody and getting a chance to get to know everyone. Fantastic. So um, I think you mentioned marketing and PR, and I know part of that is so you do social for your clients. We do. So how has using social media helped you with your with with even your business I w with my business or with our clients business with your business with my using social media I would say it has been a defining a defining factor we are so many different places and we're on so many different networks that we really have kind of thrown that net out there and we get a lot of interesting um, leads we get a lot of interesting people and businesses, and the one thing that I think really attracts small businesses to us is the fact that we walk our talk. I know that sounds kind of strange, but you know we don't just tell our clients, "Here, do A, B, and C." We actually do it ourselves for you know for raw marketing, and we show them that see this works. This is how you engage them. This is how you can build that community, and you can have a lot of fun with it, yet still be um, singing the praises of your business. Right. Well, Lori, um, I know Lori has some really big news because Lori's huge on social and promoting her uh, her interests. And I love reading your blog. I know you don't think I read it, but I do read your blog. And <laughs> She's a stalker. She just hides in the background. I just lurk a little bit, right? I just lurk. I don't necessarily get involved, but I lurk. But um, Lori just sent me a direct message. Is it okay if I tell people? Okay. So, <laughs> so Lori just sent me a message that uh, she has written a book and it, as of effectively today, went to the printer. Oh, yay! Excellent! <laughs> Fantastic! Yeah, I'm like so scared I know, now. I know you'll be tweeting about the book and all that good stuff, right? Uh, yeah, I have another. Um, I've set up Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff for it a long time ago. Cool! Well, I definitely wanted to make sure I share that news. Hopefully you, you didn't mind. <laughs> you know, it's a little bit, now that I've done it, I feel terrified, you know. It's like, oh, somebody's going to read it. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to love it. You're going to love it. You will. I, hope so. I, just want help. I just want to help people. Yeah. What you is know. the book about? It's called Pageant Savvy Social Media for the Savvy Pageant Gal. Nice. Because I directed pageants for, what, six, eight years, something like that. And um, we were supposed to move to Saudi Arabia, so I gave up my directorship uh, at the end of 20, the 2011 season in, uh, in August. And so I've been kind of like, no, <laughs> I don't, you know, I still do gra graphic design for uh, a lot of pageant girls. And um, this book I've been writing since the summer, and then my computer broke, and I wasn't going to finish it. I thought, okay, I don't have to finish it now because I broke my computer, but I still had the stuff. And when I sat down to finish it, I couldn't believe how close I was, and I was kind of embarrassed. But um, it's it's done, and it's signed off on. So excellent, I'm excellent. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um, that really is good, and I know I I know you know pageants. Um, just Ruth Ann, just a little background. Lori had me as a judge for one of her pageants. Yeah, you know, right, right after I moved here. My last one. Yeah, I, and it was I, it was probably the most nerve wracking thing I'd ever done. I will not confirm nor deny the possibilities that I too have been in a pageant. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The '80s. There's pictures floating out there with some massive hair. You you you're uh, an Oklahoma girl uh, with a. You have to. Certain amount of hair that can be lifted. Yes, the, <laughs> the volume was immense. Where I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it did happen. I'm just saying if it had happened and there was a crown, it was it was big. <laughs> Allegedly, there is a, there are photos of crowns. My last yeah. title was Mrs. Illinois. Really? In uh, 2000. Yeah. <laughs> just a couple days ago. Just yeah. back a few. A couple days ago. <laughs> So now this, I'll ask you, Ruthann. So I know you have, you do your personal Twitter. You have Facebook. You mentioned that you know you're kind of on every social network, right? So how do you manage everything, right? So for your for your personal brand, for your clients, for your business, how how what do you what tools do you use, or how do you manage your time? How do we manage our time? That is 
probably the biggest uh, hurdle that we have is trying to get everything in for everyone. And especially if you're on Twitter and you start getting into a conversation with someone where you don't want to jump off just because, whoops, my allocated time is up. You know, I, I must I must leave. Right. We use a lot of Hootsuite. You know, we, we do use some different programs where we're able to see everybody at the same time. Um, but we, one thing that we pride ourselves on is we believe that the social media is there to be social. We don't schedule our posts. We don't have, you know, we don't bundle our posts up together and then schedule them to go out. The whole point of being social is engaging and having that conversation. And it's not just resubmitting the same tweet every 3.5 hours until, you know, until you decide you haven't done it enough. Um, so it is something that we try to uh, really understand from our clients where, when their clients, when the, when their target market is on, that's when we try to engage for them. Mm -hmm. We have a couple of clients who are in the service industry and their service, their, their main customers we have found out really are on and really respond great to them first thing in the morning, like 7 a.m. 7 a.m. is their time. So one of our interns, that is, I mean, she only works till 3 in the afternoon, but she's up at 7 a.m. She is making sure the pictures are out there. They're getting Instagram. They're getting shared. And then you kind of wait a little bit and see when the conversation's going to start. Mm -hmm. And then she, you know, she either moves those conversations on or she, you know, lets our client know that people are chatting. So jump on, you know. Right. That's that's pretty awesome. I mean, I think, you know, we've we've experienced here, you know, this the auto posters and schedulers and um, I think, you know, I think <laughs> Lori knows who I'm talking about. No, I don't. But, <laughs> But, you know, and I think that's probably, you know, one thing that, that scares a lot of people is one they, once they start seeing somebody like Lori, who seems to be on Twitter all the time, right, and, and you know, seeing her having conversations, that to somebody new to Twitter is overwhelming. It right? is. It is. And so I think, you know, the tools of Hootsuite and TweetDeck and, you know, some of the other tools that can allow you to just be a, you know, to lurk. I mean, really, I think the first thing people should probably do is just listen. Absolutely. And, you know, kind of lurk around and see how it fits them, right? Yeah. And I think so. Twitter is probably, you know, with all of our clients, even even the new clients we get in, everybody's heard of Facebook and everyone's been there, but they all say the same thing. I don't get Twitter. Right. And I said, you know, it's, it's its own language, and you really do. Sometimes just get on and just watch. You just kind of watch the conversation, and sometimes we even tell them go on and you know do some searches. We kind of walk them through the process of how to build the people they're following, and really just kind of if they have the same interest, engage them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll respond back, but you know that that gets into kind of the topic uh, at the at the conference that we're going to talk about is sometimes you can have a conversation with someone on Twitter and they never respond back. Right, and you start thinking. By talking to the wall, it's like, <laughs> right. Well, so that leads me to that to the next topic is your topic is if social media is a cocktail party because I've used that a lot. And uh, you know, where's my invitation to the party? Like, you yeah. know, that that's your title, and I love that. So uh, I think we we figured out why you why you said that. But what do you think? Is that to, do you see that as a big fear point for people? I do because I think that is probably the, among some other top five complaints, it's up there with, okay, I have a page, I have a Twitter account, I'm on Instagram, but no one says anything. I have no followers. No one, it's, you know, they've invited, they have spammed their friends and family until they don't want to hear about it anymore. You know, yeah. so, okay, so now what? What is it? And that's what we're going to get into at the conference is how, you know, how to maybe recognize different personalities. And when I say personalities, they're more of, who, who is a gifter? We all know gifters, and I'm going to have some images. It's, it's going to be a very fun, a fun topic, but, you know, okay. we all know the celebutants that are out there who will attend the opening of a shoebox <laughs> for a gift. <laughs> and a lot of people like to use that as their, you know, here, come like my page, and you'll get a $50 gift certificate. Well, yeah, everybody's going to come to your page and like it, but is that your market? It, are those people going to become your customers? No. They're going to be like Paris Hilton on a Friday night. They're going to be out the door. Right. Well, there's some sites that I just go there to get the coupon. Exactly. 
Which, I mean, if that's what they're, I mean, I still buy their product, but I'm not necessarily engaging on their page. I'm going right. to download the weekly coupon. Yeah, and we, I think we all do that. We all look for a good deal, but when you're you're basing your whole social media structure on giving stuff away, right. it is, it's, it's not very productive. All right. Well, Lori, you don't seem to have any problem engaging, and you are a, a self-proclaimed shy person. I'm terribly shy. <laughs> You know, but Twitter allowed me to be who I am. You know, I think a lot of that is, you know, low self esteem not low self-esteem, but, but being shy and being unsure of myself when I was growing up. And then when I'm on Twitter, I'm I'm this I'm really Lori and people like Lori. So when I go out they expect that Lori and so I can go be myself and it's already cool because they already like me and I know it. And it made it really easy to just be me. Who is really this person, but used to floor my fifth grade teacher that I was really like that, you know, when she would see me next door. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's that that go, that's true. You know, some people. Okay, so my Twitter handle is Party Aficionado, so nobody assumes that I'm going to be shy. But I'm not necessarily uh, that extroverted person if I in front of a bunch of strangers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I do it because I've just kind of taught myself. That's how you. That's you know, if you're in a room full of people, go talk to somebody. Right? Exactly. I don't think that's a natural thing for a lot of people, but. There are some people who just, if you say social media is like a cocktail party, they're going to go running the other way because they don't feel comfortable in cocktail party sex. Right, right. You know, our advice for, for the shy, the ones who, you know, are your typical shy wallflowers at cocktail parties. And usually those are the most interesting people to talk to. Usually they have a lot to say. They just aren't very vocal. And so we always recommend, you know, some of our clients that, Think of a cocktail party you went to where the hostess was phenomenal. She was engaging, she was courteous, she was kind, she was giving, she you know, worked the room, she kept everyone engaged, she was always doing introductions. You know, think of that person, think about the things you liked about her, write them down, now try to emulate those. You know, was it is it was it that she welcomed everyone the moment they came in with a you know with a warm greeting? start there you know be very warm and open on your twitter on your facebook you know we're talking you know on websites and, and things that are not able to convey feelings but you know true feelings but at least you know what is it about her what made that make you how did that make you feel right. i think that's i think that's a good that's a good uh way to do it i don't think i've ever thought of it <laughs> that way is like what you know the the party you went to and the hostess was just amazing mm -hmm. right Right. Do, do that. <laughs> do that. Yeah, exactly. If you can't be yourself, kind of like how Lori says that you know she is usually very shy, but yet when she gets behind that those thumbs, she's able to really come out. Right. This it happens for other people also. I mean, they they're very shy, but you know if they start to think of, it can even have something to reference. Uh -huh. it, it makes it a little bit easier for them. Right. I used to pretend I was someone else. I got accidentally elected as the uh, president of the American uh -huh. Women's Association in Bahrain. And I had to speak to like 500 women every month, and I was like, oh, I can't do that. So I would be this person who could do that. This is yeah. the other person. It's not Lori. Lori can't do that. But this other person can go speak in front of 500 women every month. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, you know, I think, I think it's uh, – when I, when I saw you, to, that we, you were going to talk about personality types. I was like, are we talking Myers-Briggs and yeah. this <laughs> personality types? But I think I – think, if somebody has taken those personality exams, they'll get your references and the types of people, uh, and and you'll start to see some heads nodding because as as you were saying it, you know, is it the gifter? Is it the party? The socialite? I mean, there's introverts. There's the real, you know, type exactly. A type person. Right. There's I mean, the you know when you go to a, a cocktail party, who do you meet? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You, there's always. I mean, as much as we love our social circles, um, there's always the Debbie Downer. Who comes in and she wants to? She wants to tell you. Yeah, she wants to tell you about every single you know thing that kind of kills the mood, and we've yes, all experienced that in her life. Yes, and we've all experienced that on social networks where you'll make a fabulous post, and there's always one person that comes in and just kills the mood. So that is that's one of the types. The other one is um, is I don't know if everyone has seen Groundhog Day. We'll have a little clip on the the Groundhog Day net on the Groundhog Day the the insurance salesman. You know, Ned, Ned Flanders, yes, yes it is. And he just bombards you for 15 minutes trying to sell you insurance. Right. 
So you don't want to be either one of those people. So we're going to, we're going to discuss that. We're going to discuss how to recognize those people on your networks and how to kind of graciously steer clear of them. Fantastic. <laughs> I think that's now, I, you know, Lori, you said you are you, and I think, I think you hit it right on. Have you ever met somebody in face to face that you first met online and then found yourself kind of like in mid conversation when you meet them? <laughs> Yeah, it's it, it was great. Like the first, here's an instance. Um, several years ago, I think it was 2009, we went to a tweet up in Oklahoma City, and I brought Mrs. Oklahoma, and um, it was at Trichology Salon. And so I came. I was trying to introduce myself around, and I went up to this lady, and I said, "Hi, I'm." She goes, "Hi, Lori," and I was like, oh, "She knows who I am." <laughs> and so yeah, it was kind of cool like that. You know, kind of gets rid of that whole. Oh my gosh, I've never met her before thing because you really do know each other. You just haven't actually met in real life. I have friends everywhere, all over the world. It's so cool. I can go have coffee with anybody anywhere. Cool. Isn't it great? I think that's I think that is really the beauty of social media and you know, of the of the of the good social networks. See, and even Facebook. I think you can you can connect with people there on a level that you know, they may not be able to share on Twitter, and that's okay. But, you know, I think just getting to know the real people, and the one thing I always say is that you can do business with people who already dig you, right? They're, they already are your fans, right? Exactly. You don't have to go and try to prove anything uh, to them, <laughs> you know, because yeah. they already know your tone. They already know you, what, you, what you stand for. Exactly. Exactly. It makes it much easier. Makes it much easier. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we're going to end this here in a few minutes, but uh, Ruth Ann told us, told me about some super secret fun things that she's going to be doing with her booth at the conference. So can you give us a little hint? I would say everyone should be prepared to really get into, you know, if you're, if you're shy and you don't like cocktail parties, we're going to have some ways for you to loosen up. We're going to have some great ways to build content that you can tweet about, post on Facebook. You can leave the show with other things to actually, you know, kind of shout out to the masses, kind of break the ice. They're fun. It's going to be exciting. Pictures will be taken, and uh, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. Right. I would I would tell anybody if you're coming to Social Media Tulsa Conference or any meetup or tweet up, uh, be ready for photos. Be ready for photos. I can't. I can't tell you. I like all of the photos that are taken of me at the, at the meetups, but but as women, we never like all of them. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Awesome. Well, is there anything else, Laura? You have any questions for Ruth Ann or vice versa? No. Cool. Well, this was fun. I think uh, you know we, we had a little uh, bump there in the beginning, but I think once we got it. Got our uh, got the technology all together. This was cool. So we'll have to do it again, and and uh, so make sure you keep your schedule open. Absolutely. We'll do it again uh, leading up to the conference. Okay. Perfect. Awesome. All right, ladies. Thank you so much. We'll see you. Thank Thanks. you, ladies. Bye. Bye.